So uh, today, like uh, I'm just going to discuss or provide an approach towards right sizing of the powertrain in a smaller EV segments. Yeah, the agenda is short. Like we have some uh, analysis, like how we look at the market. We'll discuss on the approach, like based on the model-based engineering, how we are approaching towards designing the components, and I'll just summarize it very quickly. Yeah, next slide, please. I'm from Takumi Motion Control. We are a startup company based out of Bangalore, upholding a Takumi's vision to innovate in India with Japanese technology. So we have a, a catering to automotive segments with a motor controller and vehicle controller, and we also have an industrial uh, product too. We, our operations are based out of Bangalore, where we have uh, R&D, manufacturing, engineering, and sales uh, done in Bangalore, and we have one more branch in uh, Japan where we do uh, one more level of uh, engineering there. Next slide, please. Yeah. So to understand the uh, smaller EV segments in India, we have tried categorizing the two-wheelers and three-wheelers in, in a way like uh, we have shown here into 15 segments or uh, 10, 11 segments uh, here. Based on the GVW, based on the driving demand, based on the power capacity, et cetera, we have just categorized this way to understand better and the approach for us follows here. And in the middle uh, graph, you can see the market data. We have just tried populating the uh, market information, what power each vehicle has, what capacity like it runs on. And the clusters we have marked 1 to 10 is based on the above set category. And when we understand the cost, which is on the bottom side, comparing the range of uh, cost for the EV and an equivalent IC engine, we see a, a huge gap. In the mid-segment and in the lower segment, uh, scooter or a bike, the range of cost for an uh, IC engine and uh, uh, EV are, are significant. Maybe in the premium scooter segment, we have an equivalent option. And again, coming for the e three-wheelers, on the passenger side, like we can have an equivalent option. But on the other uh, segments, we have a significant uh, gap, even after fame subsidy. Next slide, please. No? So speaking about the limitations in the uh, BEV, I've just uh, tried uh, uh, putting out a uh, few points in front. So for the comparing the battery capacity, and for two wheelers and three wheelers, and comparing the driving range it provides. So though we have uh, uh, enough battery capacity, you know, catering about one, one fourth of the vehicle cost, we can only achieve a very limited range, driving range over each segment. So you can see in a typical two wheeler, the highest range we are seeing today in the market is around 120 kilometers, whereas the smallest scooter in a two wheeler can provide you 160, 180 kilometers range. And in the three wheeler, it's again similar. Like we are putting a enough battery, but even the smallest passenger uh, auto E three wheelers can provide you equivalent uh, uh, range. That means it's to get the more battery, more range, we are putting a bigger battery, which is like uh, increasing the cost. And the other scenario, the other way of looking at the segment is like, when if I am an IC engine uh, bike buyer or a two-wheeler buyer, I have two options. Either I can get a, uh, for the same money, I can get an EV, but I need to compromise on the performance and the range. If not, to, uh, if, I have, if I can pay more, I can get an equivalent uh, performance and still compromise on the range. So now, we are set to grow. The EV is set to grow, but there is a strong need to optimize the overall uh, uh, system to match the IC engine uh, uh, tones, which is already set in the market. So today, today's focus is just to provide one approach and one method which we believe like it's promising to deliver results to optimize the system you know, from a holistic approach. Yeah, next. So we are working towards a, a model-based uh, engineering approach, wherein as we categorize the segments, as we categorize the vehicles, so we have a set of uh, drivability targets from the OEMs, and we have some att attributes which we need to achieve in a vehicle level, components level, through the powertrain, and we have uh, uh, subsystems uh, which is being modeled virtually you know, in a very high fidelity level. And all these things are put together in a model-based design, one platform, to get three results. 
which is the first one is the design evaluation, meaning we do many DOE combination of uh, things. We assess the system. And the second one is to get the calibrated maps, like current map or even the drivability maps, et cetera. The third one is to support for the software code generation. So this is just a basic workflow which, which we are working on. And the next slide. So the workflow gets converted into this one. So we have a centralized GUI wherein all the, uh, model, the platform is set. We have a, uh, the use case level wherein the drivability and the use cases of the typical vehicle of each segment is being uh, modeled. And second one is the control loops at a vehicle function level, motor control function level, and other sub-functions or model. And the next one is on the having a uh, high fidelity plant model. So having this model and putting everything together, assessing all the options. So we do an optimization study and DOE and come back with a design evaluation. And the same platform can also support for the uh, code generation and uh, the outputs are mentioned on the right side, which is the uh, control algorithm, the control loops, the maps, and the vehicle function tuning can be done virtually. This also can support for the uh, software, which can directly be flashed together on the hardware or the system. So this is the set approach which we are uh, trying to do, and it is very promising to see the results here. Next slide. Just as an example, we have tried showcasing the first five uh, uh, category which we have mentioned here. Catering from a, a low segment or a mid segment scooter and a bike to a, a maxi scooter level. So we have uh, five different uh, applications or uh, products which is positioned differently in the market. And for each, each uh, uh, application, the drivability uh, expectation as a vehicle or the driving demand is different. So we do uh, study all the standard and the non-standard uh, driving cycles, how the vehicle is put to use, how it is being done. So this is where the starting point. When we understand the vehicle more, what energy it needs and what energy it can potentially offer to you to tap it. That means like we can recover during the driving. So this, is, this forms the basis to, to have the top-down approach we are drilling down from the vehicle level to a powertrain level to a motor or a controller to the component level. So this forms the basis. So when we categorize and study the wheel torque requirements and what power it translates to and what attributes we need to deliver to the vehicle manufacturer, this will be the starting point here. The next slide. Yeah, coming to the powertrain level, our focus today is to showcase an example with motor and controller. On the motor side, as we see the energy balance, we know the power demand, so now the motor designer will have a multiple uh, choice. We, uh, we know the motor uh, design is basically a function of uh, seven major parameters, the inductance, resistance, pole pairs, voltage and the current. But what we want to emphasize is doing a sensitivity analysis, meaning as we have a multiple applications, which type of motor or which level of motor we are going to do. So we can do a sensitivity analysis to see the impact of the inductance on the base speed, inductance on the uh, peak torque, and max current, and effect of pole pairs increasing, magnetic flux increasing. The key point is not deciding or optimizing a motor for a particular application, but having it capable of scalable for the next application. That means if I'm doing a, a motor of five kilowatt, can the same motor be scaled up to seven kilowatt, 6.5 kilowatt by optimizing or modifying one of these parameters? Meaning so that means I'm not uh, depending heavily on the supply chain. I can manage well within the existing limits. I'm just saying some of the parameters or one of the components and doing it. So similarly, on the hardware or on the software, the way we are dissecting it as modules, like control boards, gate drivers, power boards, communication uh, elements, sensing elements, capacitor, and the heat sink. So the modules were put together here to understand better and make it scalable. 
again, I just wanted to emphasize, it's not about optimizing it for one application, but making it scalable for the next application. We want to have a reuse capability for the controller, giving it on the hard architecture of hardware or even software. We want to use most of the library components. We want to standardize the interface between hardware and software. And all these things can be made into a virtual system. We can make use of it uh, through a model-based design. So um, next slide, please. Just to summarize, so we have a wider range of use cases on the vehicle which cannot be changed, meaning we need it. The end user needs to use the vehicle as they want. And the OEM, the vehicle manufacturer, need to make as many as vehicle variants possible to cater to the uh, end users. So wider range of use cases, wide range of uh, vehicles, and this is where we need to work on to have a minimal set of components on a subsystem level. Having a flexibility here, or uh, scalability on a subsystem level can provide you or minimize the set of components which we have at subsystem level or system level and make the scalability through modularity, meaning you dissect the components or system into each modules and make it scalable here. So this, this uh, push or a minimization of the components level can be used to standardize the vehicle level interface, making it uh, on the mounting or the hardware and software interface or even the communication methods. We want to ensure flexibility we provide to the OEM so that they can make enough variants out of this one and keeping it or uh, going easy with the supply chain with the known materials, known process, and a lower manufacturing cost. Yeah, so this is the approach and the method we just wanted to convey and we'll work along with you. Thank you. Any questions?